Somebody give a mighty clap of free. Before we continue, there is a car that needs to move. The number is HJD990, please. You need to move your car. HJD990. Please. Move your car, please. We quickly take our hymn and we welcome the bride to our midst. To God be the glory, great things He has done. So lovely the world that He gave us. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. 
We call upon the choir to minister one song for us before the word of God comes. The choir, the church choir to minister one song.
if the father and the mother of the bride is here with you respect please lift up and then we give you a pros come on come on and all those who are here to witness the ceremony with the bride, could you please stand on your feet so that we give you an applause? Oh, come for them, come for them. Come for them. We give God the praise. Now we are going to also invite the father and the mother of the groom. If the father and mother of the groom is here, please, with you, respect and humility. Oh, give them an approach to the house of God. Some of God. Highly welcome to the restoration of some of God. Yes, you so welcome, Daddy and Mother. And all those friends and acquaintances, can you please lift up? Yes. Yeah. Come for them. Come for them. And give them praise. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, are you ready to hear the word of God? Today you will hear the undiluted word of God. Let us welcome our own Papa in the house. His pastor, his studio, men's to introduce the man Hallelujah. Amen. Today is a very wonderful day. And it is the day that the most high God himself has made. And it is the day that we have witnessed the promise of God to the humanity. Marriage is something that was ordained by God Himself. And God has made it so honorable. So if today we are witness this marriage ceremony, I believe that the whole host of army is also enjoying with us. So I welcome all and some to the restoration of some base of God Hanover. And I said, I may the Lord protect you here. And may you get back home peacefully. Beloved in Christ and creation. We have so many dignities in our midst. But with all respect, if you are a pastor and deacon and you are sitting in the congregation, please, you can come up here. Hallelujah. Amen. Cry for Jesus. Beloved, today we have an extraordinary man of God in our midst. Since I have a divine encounter with this man, my destiny has been changed upright. Because in this single encounter with him, he will let you know the things of God. He will let you understand life. And he will help you to organize yourself to see the good things that he make happen for you. He is not an ordinary man. He is a professor in theology. My God. And he is he's the general superintendent of Assemblies of God Ghana. And he's also commission commissioner for small arms. And besides that, also, he is a deputy general superintendent of Assemblies of God Africa. Beloved in creation, 
He is a man of vision. He introduced a vision in Assemblies of God that I love most. Vision 3000. Oh, your friend, vision 3000. That is planting churches for five years. 3000 churches in five years. Now, or see, I see any woman in this one, you who say, you bet you get the assolate, a pin, 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 or who soon I see any woman. And I'm proud to announce to you that this vision have achieved its ultimate aim. Now, a young Abu, what the brain, something catching out, say, and this one, dear woman, I've been over years with you in the room. He is the man that is building an a complex headquarters. Complex. Na oye, who who muni pa ni aku pon nam diswa. Edi a solid day kakraka ana offices kakraka. A B M ba ya si da A C ho e waga na mamu. Beloved, if you see the structure. Na odofo se who kwa swa omo si che sa dano e si one. The way it has been designed. Na sena. I've been for a I want to tell you that be proud of this man. The wife has been so blessed to me that I cannot explain to you. Yes. The number one sermon I love in life. Na na sem ana nyamia sem a mi pa okaya mi pa wo mabra bo mi se it was mama that gave to me onu ene di san yakopon asem no e ma me he said that in the no one ministry o si e wo no no one juma yemo wo christo so mo no he was dealing with wild animals oni e mu a o mo ni e din e no ni o mu e different kinds of animals no si e mu a wo ro be be lions Wolves, just snakes, sibo, or what? Any of the other kind. But Mama said, Pastor, na okachi ya mzao zovu. The Lord told Noah something. Na erade ekachi ya Noah. The Lord said, Noah, osi no way. Deal with them. Osi for omu enyo according to their character. Sena omu su etiye according to their nature. Sena omu abodi etiye. And this message have really blessed my life. Na asemu way ashira mabraho. Today we are so grateful. Na ene ye ni achi bebre aso ye ni bebre. To have this man of God and a wife in our midst. Say ye nyam nyam mini back as ye o bring point eni ni kuteni e wo ye ntemo. Because of their humility. E san se o mo hubra si enti. God have blessed them and blessed their children. Nya ku po ashira wo mo aso so mo ye mo ma. So I personally believe that. E ti mi am pa di a mi jidi se. It is advantage for us to have such kind of man of God in our midst. So I want you to really prepare yourself to listen to his teachings and preaching. Because it's going to be profitable unto you. So with a mighty crab offering, I want to introduce me, I want the Lord, Professor. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do pray that you speak to us and bless us. Amen. Amen. I want to preach everything in English, then I will summarize it in Greek. Amen. 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 Amen
Amen. So the sermon will go straight in English with that interpretation. Then I will summarize it so everybody should assess patient. Amen. Father, we are ready for your word. You have something for us. And we are for it. Amen. I'm talking about marriage being kept honorable by all. And uh, I will also talk, you know, I will deal with the foundation and the walls of marriage. I will liken a marriage to a building like where we are sitting. There is a foundation. Then there are normally four walls. One, two, three, four. But we will have nothing on the roof because God has is the roof. He sees within it. Amen. Amen. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 4. I'm only talking about a single verse, but I'll be making some references. I don't normally preach long at marriages. I don't preach long because the people that you want to listen, if you speak so long, they will forget about everything. It is their day. All that they are thinking is this thing should be over, their reception will be over, and they will be alone. So if you preach too long at marriages, you destroy their day. You make it so brief and short, short verse that they can remember, and then you leave them, amen, amen. to enjoy the rest of the day. Sometimes I don't know why some pastors preach so long. In their preparation and their counseling, do all those things. I want to congratulate the parents of the bride and the groom for bringing their children in the things of God. I want this room to be very, very quiet and orderly. When I'm preaching, I don't like distractions. It is good that your child will not go out coming there, walking this way. And then begin to vomit, vomiting. And then you begin to sense that something is happening. And the greatest shame for the parents is to chase the man who did the thing. So if a child will sit down, control herself until she's been asked into marriage, then it is to the glory of God. It's also good for the side of the man not to see that the parents are coming. Co -co 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 -co. Are you the mother and the father of this boy? Your son came to her house, you know, your son met her daughter, and A, B, C, D has happened. Then the man will begin to say, it's not me, it's me. I mean, these things are very shameful. So when the Lord, people can wait on the Lord, and at the right time, do the right thing, come before the Lord to bless their marriages, then it's an honor to God. Who told you that it cannot happen today? Or it cannot happen in Europe? So I want to congratulate the parents. And I want to congratulate you people. And this should be an example to all the young people. Wait. Don't rush. And at the right time, the Lord will magnify himself. Amen. Hebrews 13 Verse 4. Marriage is honorable. Sleeping around is not honorable. Marriage is honorable among all. That is, in every culture, in every institution, people honor marriages. Go to India. Go to Saudi Arabia. Go to Nigeria. Go to Ghana. Go to United Kingdom, in Deutschland here, go to Scotland, wherever people get together, they honor marriage. Hallelujah. Amen. It's honorable by all. And the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. That is, God doesn't. Is not interested in men and women sleeping around without being married. 
It is ungodly, and God will judge that. Whenever I mention marriage, I spend time to define it so that people can understand what marriage is and what marriage is not. Marriage is a relationship between a man and a woman. People of different sex. Not people of the same sex. Hello? Hi. I am very clear about that. And I don't apologize as a preacher of the gospel. The two people of mature mind they are matured agreeing that they will stay together as husband and wife for the rest of their life. In that agreement they say that it is only death that can separate us. So yesterday, the pastor brought them to me. The only question I asked them is that, do they know that they are going to live for the rest of their lives? You don't go into it, in my culture, you say marriage is not like palm wine. Then you taste it, and then you go back. Oh, the love is gone. It is finished. You know, I'm not interested again. And some people, when you want to talk about it's my private life. Marriage is not a private life. It's not a private affair. Amen. So, Ruth and uh, Louise, I've been told you are a pastor. You told me yourself. Two people, you and Ruth, you should not be pushed by some people. No, I don't care if people introduce you together. The introduction doesn't force you to make a decision. Amen. It should not be, decision should be not be made by parents. Should, be, should not be made by friends. Should not depend upon actual things that you see. Because one day it will be there, tomorrow it won't be there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The hair will not be there. The feet could not be there. Probably 34 years ago, my tummy was not there. It is now there. I got married 34 years ago, 8 April 1984. So I'm getting old. Amen. Amen. So, you see, things change. But true love doesn't. So we don't look at circumstances. In Europe, he has heard because she has purpose. So you marry the person after you go to a papers, you dump her. That's why many of the girls have been dumped. She has this. She has that. She has that. In Europe too, you know, I have not lived here, but at least since 1986, I've traveled almost across. You know, bills. This thing, when you are alone, you are paying all these things, it's very difficult. So you, get, you need to get somebody to support you. In this, this is not marriage, this is slavery. So some of the men treat their women as slaves. You know, the reason is you want the person to come and help you. In marrying, you rather decide to have the lady, the lady decide to have the man. But if you think that you just want somebody who should help you to achieve your aim in life, then you have failed. Amen. Amen. Marriage is giving all. It is not like school children writing letters. I love you, 99%, add 1%. And the, you know, the brightness of this day give me general. No! It is giving 100% of your all to the person. So, marriage is two matured adults, not boys and girls, knowing that they are going to be responsible. Cause one another, and should the Lord give them children, they are going to move, live together to bring these children in the things of God. Let me say that we don't marry because of children, but they are blessed. 
When you marry and the Lord gives you children, it's a blessing and joy. But if the Lord has not given you children, you don't have to say, I'm divorcing the man or the woman because you don't have children. Amen. God knows that which is the best. Amen. And for whatever condition, you must learn to appreciate God. Amen. And because it's, marriage is honored by all in every culture, whether it's in Germany, in Ghana, in Nigeria, in Sierra Leone, everywhere, it's got three dimensions. Uh, all these are definitions before I talk about the words. The first dimension is what? The two people agreeing and making the family aware. So they will inform the two families. And some, it will just be wherever, whether they are wearing rings or engagement or whatever. In my side of the world, it will be customary rights. In Western society, they say an engagement. But even there, until recently, when people do their dance halls, the two families will be together and this will be done. I have actually attended an engagement in Deutschland where two Germans were, the family of the man and the family of the women, all of us were together. We celebrated the ceremony and it was beautiful before we ever went to the church. Amen. Who told you? It was just like the African system. It is now that we are doing things easily. So people just meet at dance halls and they just kneel down, will you marry me? And they stand. It is not even true traditional European. So when the family has done it, then we have what they call civil. In every society, you need to regicide. Either the clergy or the court or wherever. It is normally registered. And then, of course, the religious side of it. Where for us, we pray. For other cultures, they have their thing, the other things to do. So I want to believe that they have done the traditional and they will do the civil if it has not been done. And then we are now doing the religious thing. This makes marriage complete. And like I said, marriage has got a foundation, and the foundation is Christ. Amen. Amen. He is the solid rock. He is the eternal rock. Everything should be built and established on him. When things are done outside Christ, then they have been established on the sinking sun. Oh, I am glad that my brother and my sister have come here to begin life on Christ the solid rock. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to recommend him to you. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. It comes from the Father of lights in whom there is no variable, there is neither shadow of turning. Lose the whole world and gain Christ. And you have got the best. I've never been disappointed since I gave my life to Christ. And for 34 years, we are getting better and better. Because of him. Man will fail you. Man will disappoint you. But when Christ is with you, you can make it. With Jesus in the boat, you can smile at the storm. I won't say that for 35 years, we haven't gone through difficulties. But Christ has made the difference. Amen. He should be the foundation of every marriage. Every decision that you make in life. Seek his will. Invite him to be there. And then it should be better. Do you remember the wedding feast? In Canaan. They made sure they had Jesus. At the feast. And when the one got finished and nobody knew what to do, Mary said, Whatever he tells you, do it. And at the right hand, Jesus changed the water into wine. For whatever you do, 
do not forget God. When the goings go tough, call him and he will make a difference. There may be challenges. There are times you may enjoy, but there are difficulties also there. Let me tell you the truth. But when you invite him in those difficult periods, he will make things better. If you are here and you are struggling to, through your marriage, divorce is not the solution. You may divorce and go and follow another person and you don't know the more problems you may bring. Somebody has said, the devil you know is better than the angel you don't know. Amen. Separation is not a problem. Amen. Go to God. Mm -hmm. Allow him in and he can turn the water into wine. He can turn the night into golden day. In Europe, I know how people chasing for money and material things have neglected the things that are important and their marriages have destroyed. Especially we Africans. We come here and we think the material things of the world is the better thing for us. We chase them so much so that we neglect the most important thing and we lose everything. Oh, that. We should build everything on God. Amen. He should be the foundation. Amen. The surest foundation. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we are talking about four walls. One, two, three, four. The first wall is wall of communication. Talking. Amen. 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 Shout. Mm -hmm. Oh, these days, this... this uh, Several years ago, a research was made that the number one wreckage of marriages was television in the 70s and 80s, where the man will be watching something and the woman will be watching something. Today is the Facebook, the iPad, the WhatsApp, and all those things. After they have gone out and went all day, they come home and the woman on the Facebook and the man on the Facebook, the woman on the WhatsApp. Make sure that these things are not bad. I love it. Hallelujah. It makes you see what is happening. This morning, when my wife turned on her Facebook, she said, I'm glad it's the weather is going to be sunny, blah, blah, blah. Yesterday, I tell it on the first page. Hanover is going to be it's going to be snow in Hanover, so Paul prepare for this. It will be your name. These things are good, but they can also be destructive. Don't allow anything to destroy the verbal communication between the husband and wife. Talk, chat, smile. Hallelujah. There may be times problems will arise, but Talk. Talk it over and get it over. So the first communication is the verbal communication. Make sure you speak to your husband and you speak to your wife. Whatever words you want to choose, darling, dear, bra, bra, it's up to you. I don't have this as a culture. But some people, darling, dear, sweetie, this is... And some of them are not even sweetie. Amen. <laughs> some people call their husbands Mula. And they are not Yehudas. Amen. <laughs> Hypocrisy, things and distance. Amen. So I'm not so much interested in those. What I want to know is that you should communicate, talk, chat, laugh together. When you laugh, it, it, it kills a lot of pains, a lot of tension and problems. And possibly when you want to watch some program, work a few things together. Then, touching, hallelujah, is also another form of communication. Check your husband, check your wife, hallelujah. Check every part of the body, it belongs to you, hallelujah. Amen. And of course, your conjugal relationship is very, very, very important. That is the man and the woman sleeping together. When you use all your energy at work, reserve a little. For the night. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's very, very important that you communicate verbally. You communicate by touching one another. 
and you communicate in the bedroom. I think you are adults, especially the adults understand me. It is very, 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 very important. When there is no effective communication, it kills marriages. Marriages are killed when there is no proper communication, both verbally, both by touching and both by having your conjugal relationship. It is very, very important. And uh, in doing so, you make everything attractive, everything better, everything well. Hallelujah. The men, the women, your preparation, your appearance, your smells, your everything can make things better or make things worse. Never take your husband for granted or your wife for granted. But they are also moving around the world, meeting different people. And uh, it takes great work to put others aside. Hallelujah. Amen. Then the third thing is forgiveness. In my language, Ghanaian Cree, I'll say it. We say that we are bending the two the three, two trees when they are together they roar and the tea and the tongue they even fight. If we are living in the same room, rubbing shoulders together, doing things together, we are bound to offend one another or do something against the other. So they are normal, they are natural, they are bound to happen. But how do you handle them? Jesus, even in Matthew chapter, I think 6 verse 14 said, you know, after the Lord's prayer, he only took one verse to comment on this. If you do not forgive people their sins, your heavenly Father will also not forgive your sins. That's the only verse he commented. So husbands, your wife will offend you. Ruth will offend you. Louis. Louis will offend you. So prepare to forgive. Sometimes we can forgive friends. We can forgive other people. But we find it so difficult to forgive the person who is so close to us. And then we harbor it. We harbor it. Then it, it grows until it becomes bitter. And relationships spoil. And sometimes what follows is that we begin to lose interest in ourselves. And the relationship becomes so damaged that the best thing we think you do will be separation or divorce. The Bible says, be angry, but sin not. And do not let sin go down on your anger. So, I'm, I'm not only speaking to them. If you have an issue with your wife, or with your husband or somebody, even Jesus said that if somebody offends you, forgive that person 70 times 7. And Jesus says that even if you are going to pay your offering, you are tight. And you have something against somebody. He didn't say take your offering back home. Leave it there. And go and settle the score. Ask for forgiveness and do the correction before you come back and pay the offering. So, Ruth, learn to forgive your husband. Learn to forgive your wife. They will happen. Especially at the early ages of marriage or early stages of marriage where you come from different parts, he comes from different parts, different culture, different things, and especially Ruth, but I've seen what people are doing to the husband, the wife, and she expect, he expects that. And the verse was that he has seen what people are doing to their the wives are doing to the husband and he expects that. But Everybody has got a different idea. And then you don't get your expectations, or your expectations are not met. But with much prayer, forgiveness, and patience, things will change. Hallelujah. Amen. Then the last but not the least, mutual respect and trust. I have said. 
if you make your wife a queen, you trust her and respect her, she will make you a king. Don't you know that the Bible says that the man is the head? Don't you know that I'm the leader? You have to love her, nurture her, make her feel like somebody, make her feel like, so I mean, let her feel like a lady. Speak kind to her. Don't try to be a child that's always nagging and complaining about little and little. Learn to accept her the way she is. And she will also learn to accept you. There are so many people who only want to demand. The woman, stop demanding. Nag him. And just be there for him. And pray that the Lord will bless him. And pray that things will be better. And when things will be better, no man is blind. Every man wants the wife to look good. Tell us, my wife is looking good. <laughs> so, if it will take extra man to do that, the man will do it. So, exercise patience. The best thing any man wants is to make sure that the wife is feeling good and the wife is enjoying life. So, women, Exercise patient. And every woman also wants the man to appear very nice. To me, every woman is like the woman mentioned in the book of Proverbs. If you treat her well, if you handle her well. Hallelujah. Somebody has said women are like computers. You, the input brings the output. You see what we are reading here? I have given some information and they have put them in you know on their laptop and it's been transmitted through the overhead projector. It is on the wall. So man, if you don't give you don't feed the computer with the right thing, with the right information, with the right message, don't go and blame the women. It is what you put in is what they give out. <laughs> Hallelujah. So treat your wife well, and you will see the best out of her. Amen. Speak well. Treat her as a human being. Amen. Respect her. Amen. Adore her. Let her feel good, and she will make you feel good. Amen. So it is not like, if she does this, then I will do that. Just do your part, and the others will follow. And I said that all this should be done in the atmosphere of prayer. In fact, the first one, I think you are a bit late. Foundation of every marriage is Christ. The first wall is love. Oh, I didn't mention that. I think I, I, I left the I love the love part. Sorry. So let it be last. It doesn't matter. Love. Love. The man loving the woman and the woman loving the man. For this part, I will read 1 Corinthians 13. There are a few verses that I want to read. Not the whole chapter. 1 Corinthians 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, I have not love. I have become a sounding brass or a changing symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith so that I could move mountains but have no love, I am not. And although I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. This, these are the verses which are so dear to me for the sake of this message. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. 
Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. It's not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in equity. But rejoice in the truth. Bears all things. Believe in all things. Hopes in all things. Endure all things. Love never fails. So it's very, very important. The Bible says there is no fear in love. For perfect love casts away all fear. I do not suspect my wife. I do not fear my wife. I will not harbor anything. Because I love her. I will not go and screw my wife's mobile phone when she's not there. And if my wallet is there, I will not hide it from her. I will not take my mobile phone and run outside to listen to messages. Unless she's watching TV or is doing something and I don't want to disturb her because she likes listening to the news. Other than that, there's nothing. Amen. Transparency. Where there is love, there is transparency. Amen. And I will not even listen to any bad news or wicked or Amen. evil news that somebody will come and tell me about my wife. And likewise, she will not even believe them, even tell them this news. When we begin to live this kind of life, neither death or demons or angels can come and separate us. Sometimes we do our own mistakes. And then for Africa, everything is demon. You know a message I had on WhatsApp this week? I put it on my Facebook. How many of you have read it? Africans. It's my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my brother. Somebody, two, they said two ladies, the same car went to a white lady's house. And the white lady said, oh, poor car. How did you come, bruh, bruh, bruh? Cut, cut. Gave the car to milk and took care of it. And then, you know, protect the car and say, tomorrow morning I'll look for the owner. The next day, the car went to an African lady's house. The first thing is you team on and cut you out. <laughs> then you call the prophet, pastor, prophet, as for this, the Filipino that have come to my household, oh, the cat. <laughs> Don't try to do wrong things and ascribe everything to demon. Change your attitude, change your life, and do the right thing. And the demons will fly away. <laughs> we don't get them to do the right things and demons, and pray for me, and prophets, and deliverance, and all these things. Let us do the right, and let us believe. Let us respect our husbands. Husbands, let us respect our wives. And let us do things that will give glory to God. Amen. Beloved in Christ and Christian, we are in a very sensitive moment. And before I reintroduce the last opportunity for the second phase, pressure is mine to welcome Pastor John Oje Yede. Pastor, you are highly welcome. Oh, God bless you. You are representative. Oh, I got the name. And uh, Benjamin is representing our beloved pastor from Faith Church. Is born. So, one more time, clap of friend for our elder. Because of time, we thank all man of God here, my own Emmanuel, Pastor Emmanuel from Continuation Ministry, is a very wonderful man of God in Lucido. You are highly welcome. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Now, we want all the faith church to stand up so that we welcome them highly to the house of God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. 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 God for them. Now we want all the restoration of service of God members to stand up. Ushers, please can we bring the pillows forward?
Now, with another mighty cup of friend, help me to welcome our professor, General Secretary. Oh, Sam, and the Hallelujah. Amen. Faithful Mukru. Amen. Amen. Ah, Maria. Anyway, the pleasure is my again to bless Pastor Louis Asarejima and Rupert Sewoli come and stand in place. Dear beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in the holy estate of matrimony, which is commanded of St. Paul to be honorable by all, and therefore it is not by any to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, discreetly, adversely, soberly, and in the fear of God. Into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. If any man can show any just cause why they may not be lawfully joined together, let him not speak or as hereafter forever hold his peace. Look at them. If you have any objection to their marriage, raise up your hands right now. Or else, when I finish the Keep quiet. Amen. Don't go and do any gossiping. <laughs> now turn to me. I require a charge you both as you will answer by the dreadful day of judgment when the secrets of all us shall be disclosed. That if either of you know any impediment, why? You may not be lawfully joined together in matrimony. You do not confess it. For be ye well assured that if any person are joined together, otherwise than God's word doth allow, the marriage is not left for. Um, no impediment. I know no impediment. Good. Mr. Louis Asarujima, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to love together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will thou love her, comfort her, honor her, and keep thee, keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others as long as we both shall live? Yes, I do. Outside. Will you have this man to be your wedded husband, to, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you obey him and serve him, love, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, keep only to him, so long as you both shall live? Yes, I do. Yes. Who is giving this woman to marry? Nipakura do obey my wife, Mamra. What's your name? Kofi Award. Do you know this man? Yes, please. Has he done all the cosmetic rights? Yes, he did. All. Are you, on behalf of your family, presenting Ruth to her to, to him in marriage? Yes. The hold this hand and put it in his hand. I say, I could fear what waters. I could fear what waters. Give you my daughter Ruth. Give you my daughter Ruth. Into marriage. Into marriage. With, from my heart. From my heart. In the name of God the Father. In the name of the God the Son. Father and the Son. God the Holy Spirit. God of Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do you have any family member who is holy? From the man's side, the groom's side, I want to ask some questions. Who is 
Uh -huh. You are Mr. Francis. Are you standing here to support this marriage? Yes. Prepare to take this woman to your house? Yes, I do. And make sure that your son takes good care of her? Yes, I do. You see that how beautiful she is? Yes, I do. If the rest of my camera one have seen that the color is changing, the face is changing, and everything is changing, I will hold you and your family responsible. No problem. Clap for Mr. Paul. I, I, Lewis Asari Jima, take you, take you, Ruth Ose, to be my wedded wife, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better. For ways. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. So they do as part. So they do as part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And they to apply thee my truth. And they be apply truth. Or oh, I give you my promise. Or oh, I give you my promise. I, I will say one Take the, take the, Louis Asari Jima. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love, to love, to cherish, to cherish, and to obey, and to obey, till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And there to I pledge thee my truth. And there to I pledge thee my truth. Or I give you my promise. Or I give you my promise. Amen. 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 What? Sign or token are you giving to your wife as a pledge? Um, I have uh, my ring here. Where is it? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Louis Asarijima is presenting a golden ring to the woman of his heart. This ring is circle. It's going to encompass her with his love. It has no beginning nor ending. So the love which is starting today has no ending. Just as in my country we call something God I'm saying. People are struggling to get gold. He has struggled to get this gold and will take good care of this gold. Amen. Amen. With this ring, with this ring, I do well. I do well. And all my worldly goods, and all my worldly goods, including my body, including my body, I do endow. I do endow. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Father. God the Son. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. And God the Holy Spirit. Amen. What do you have for your husband? Ruth is also presenting a golden ring, telling all the people here that this man is like a gold. You may see him darker than hair, but according to Ruth, he is pure gold. Hallelujah. He has worked so hard to win his heart, Amen. and he will treat him Amen. as good. Amen. 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 Take care. With this ring, with this ring, I do well. I do well. In all my worldly goods, in all my worldly goods, including my body, 
clothing my body. I be and down. I be and down. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Good, 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 good. Now we are going to pray for them. So I will invite the pastors to join me as we pray. The pastors should join me and all the elders around from both churches and visiting pastors and elders. All of you should come and stand around them. I saw for a while in our sermon in our mind, sorry. to take the veil for us to see whether it is indeed rude or sane. Thank you. 
certificate to you as a testimony that you have been joined together this day as a husband and a wife to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. And then, my dear, it's only more of a question. Yeah, you know, my dear, say, all of them, you may be rather taking care of them. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing here as a man of God and as a sort of God pastor to introduce this man and this woman to you. After they have gone through this ceremony, they have exchanged vows, they've done the cosmic rites, and they've signed the signatures. I introduce them to you as husband and wife. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My God has therefore joined together. Let me not be asunder. I feel the freshest, the newest couple in the whole world. to present the church offering to the couples. Our lovely sister woman Amen. 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 Mr. and Mrs. Lewis. Mr. I would like to invite Mr. and Mrs. Lois Asari Chima to come forward. And now I need that today is the happiest day in my life and Mama Ruth's also life. And you also your life. And even the angels in heaven, and even the demons under the earth, they will enjoy. the topic for all love us. Everything is is the money, l'argent, cash, and that. And a woman. And a medium mom. We thank God for the marvelous thing that we have done for the family. If you see we the family standing here, we stand to enjoy with our son, Mr. Jima, to present this thing to them. 
Now, the problem is that you are telling me that my mother is fine. Sir, the day of the Indiana, you will be a dean of. Of first, I said, I said, I found you too. Now, I found you as well. It's as I found you no more. I found you as well. I'm here to help you. You sure? You can be sure. We are presenting this gift especially for our dear wife that she should use this gift to make sure the marriage went well in the name of God. Me too, if you see me standing here. Many sisters, me I and my sisters, the three of us. The junior sister the Ruth. Our junior sister is our dear sister Ruth. As we stand here. Not It's very afternoon. Sister Ruth, you put us out, said you. And you jaw kind. Our water when you we are using this gift to bless your marriage in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Women, we minister hearts unto Christ. Am I a small? Yes, Our dear sister Ruth, the women ministry in Restoration Assemblies of God. We are here to present to you this wonderful gift. As you are getting married today, it's our privilege and it's, um, we don't even know what to say because you are very dear to us. And you are leaving us, so we, we present this to you as a token of gift. If you open it, you will always remember us wherever you go. I present this to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My dear daughter and my in-law, I stand here for the family uh, waters. In fact, today I'm very so happy. Because not all people you walk with them and you see how did God give glory in their lives. Today, I'm so glad and I thank the Lord so much. And here, I present this parcel to you. As you know, the reason why your father, your siblings, pick you as a family. We present this parcel to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Not the presentation, but if you hold it, it's a Bible. Don't forget, always I pray with you, I advise you, the way you humble yourself and submit yourself into your husband, try to obey the word of God, and so that your marriage be successful. Look at me, the way I'm loving your father. Yeah, everybody know the way I love. So I teach you always, love my kingdom, so that you will be prosperous. Amen. Hallelujah. With the humility, shall we all be on our feet as we are calling our daddy to close the so Our Father in heaven, we are grateful to you for the day. Thank you for blessing this ceremony and thank you for helping us to have a wonderful conclusion as we meet the part here for the reception with our brothers and sisters from Israel, the people who will be traveling to various parts of Deutschland and other parts of the world that we will be with them and take them to their places peacefully. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Now, with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. 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 I love you with you. You must go. Amen.
the bitches will be going on here.